How's it going, Gibber? Enjoying it so far. Shinra Manor was the biggest building in town. And older than the reactor. The company used to conduct research there, back when they were still a small manufacturer. Even so, the rent on that plot was basically what kept the village of Well, here we are. What now? I mean, the whole place is pitch black. You think he's sleeping or something? What if he's sick? I like the outside of the manor. Him? A little Mako poisoning isn't good. Very spooky. You know what else is kind of nice? I didn't think about this when we played the demo. Um, how's it going, Ryan? Welcome. Um, but the the mansion is kind of like buried in the forest a little bit. It's like further out. Instead of being in the town, it's like you got to walk a bit and it's like hidden in the woods. Which I feel like is better because in the original, it's like just chilling there and it feels a bit like out of place, I guess. I mean, it does have like the gate in front of it, but it's it's a little too close to everything else. I, I kind of like this better where it's kind of hidden a bit right off the beaten path, right? I mean, you have to walk all the way out of the village before you get to the gate. I kind of like that better. It's a cool little detail. Yeah, Crisis Core was the same way. Yeah, they put it kind of outside. I don't remember if I ever checked over here. I mean, it's not going to be anything because we're done. We're done fighting. But. Now, here's where things get a bit goofy. What is with the layout of this mansion? First of all, I kind of like how it's more dilapidated. Like, that's pretty cool. Uh, but what is with the layout? It's like. For some reason, you can't even go up to the top. Uh, there is a door here, but it's barred and it's like out a bit, which I don't remember if the old one was or not. And then the elevator's over here, a look around the place. which is odd. Sephiroth and the piano's the here. I do like that the piano's here. Look at how bloody and creepy it is. Is it bloody? Or is it just... Oh, I guess it's just worn. The ivory is worn. Uh, what the... What was that? Oh, the chair. You can move the chair. Oh, no. What is that sound effect? The sound effect does not fit this chair at all. Why does it sound like that? It sounds like a metal chair. Oh, zero out of ten. Uh, but yeah, like, so I think Crisis Core had an elevator, but I think it was there, not here. So I don't even think it's matching Crisis Core. And yeah, we don't get the cool, like, spiral staircase, or not spiral staircase, but the spiral wooden planks like in the original, which is like not necessary, but would have been kind of cool. Not sure why they did an elevator instead. Never knew it had a this looks great, though. Was news to me too. And village had a clue. Uh, OK, I, I did want to kind of meme meme this a little bit. Uh, this is kind of cool because I believe this is supposed to be Vincent's door. But what happened here? They, like, put chalk on the wall, and then they put... Wait, there's some... I didn't notice that before. Was that in the demo? I don't remember that. Uh, so... It looks like they put this wall here, and they put the chalk on it, but then afterwards they overlaid the rocks and, like, this door... So it's cut off, which makes no sense. Like, unless it used to be just a rock wall and someone wrote, turn back on it, and then the mansion was built afterwards, but why would they have wrote that if the mansion wasn't built yet? It doesn't make any sense. 
And how would these rocks like grow over top that? Like it, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad looking at it. It's like whatever. But when you actually sit in here and think about it, you're like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Then we got the the containers, which is cool. This room is turned around a bit, but it's fine. I do like that the pods are here. This door is new, I think. I don't think there's usually a door here. I actually... I couldn't remember when we played the demo if there's a door there, and then I never checked, but I'm pretty sure there's no door there. Or at least it's off-screen, so you can't see it. Excavated from a 2,000-year-old rock I meant in the original, not the demo. Stasis. Professor Gast named this life form Genova. M E G L 77 1977. Genova. Verified as an ancient. Uh, M E G L 913 1977. Genova Project approved. So, they named the life form Genova. And once they understood what she was, they grew ambitious. And I love that line. Hey, Sephiroth, what you got there? I, I love that line. They grew ambitious. Yeah, I should be. I should be very clear because I know people sometimes take this the wrong way. I should be very clear. I'm only pointing out differences to the original, just for the sake of pointing them out. I'm not saying like it's bad that there's a door there and there isn't a door in the original and zero out of 10 remake. I'm just simply pointing it out. I don't mean it as a negative when I say the original had a door here, but now the door is two feet to the right. I don't mean like, how could they do this? <laughs> like, you know, I'm just simply pointing it out. So hopefully that's clear. I don't want anyone to think I'm like nitpicking. Like I'm fine with them changing things. I just, you know, I just like to point it out because it's interesting. Leave me be. But zero, for, yeah, let, no, let me be clear. This game does suck. Like, zero out of ten for sure. <laughs> I mean, the president didn't die in his chair. We're still, still, no, he it? has not died in his chair, so. In the if he does not die in the chair here, bad game. Like a man possessed. Turn B out of ten. <laughs> How's it going, Dill? Hey, man, I really appreciate you saying that. I really do. Thank you. you. You don't know how much that means to me. Yo, man, thank you for the gifted sub to Dill. Appreciate that. A locked reactor door. Who sleeps on a bed like this? Name of Sephiroth's mother. Like, get your head on the pillow at least, dude. Ah, screw it. Racking my brain's not gonna get me anywhere. May as well just ask the guy. Ah, oh, so epic. I love him sitting there holding the book. Cloud. I've come across the most fascinating passage. The specimen found in strata dating back 2,000 years smiled with what could only be described as ethereal grace. Though the truth eluded me at first, I later determined that she was an ancient or a steward of the planet, as they are referred to in legend. She needed a name, and so I dubbed her Genova. The Genova project was approved soon after. A bold initiative to resurrect the long-dead ancients. An initiative that resulted in my conception. Or rather, my creation. The crowning glory of Professor Gast 
wondrous experiment. He created you? I should go. Mother is waiting. The change in his smile from like an actual smile to like the creepy smile is so nice. Asking myself, why couldn't I have come too sooner? If I had, maybe I could have saved the village. Or tried, at least. Oh, that's not the part where he normally flies. He flies later when you see him in the basement. What? He always walks there. Um, so I'm really curious, I'm really curious how they handle this, and I don't want to talk about this yet, obviously, because we're not going to know till later, but I just kind of want you to know where my headspace is at right now. I'm really curious how they handle this, because what makes Sephiroth such a great villain is that he's an ironic villain. Everything he just read is a lie. He thinks it's true. That's why... This happens and later we find out that he was actually just misinformed and that's what makes it so you know ironic that he became evil and and stuff and so like but the original never comes out and specifically says that the ghast reports yeah tragic is a better word for it um the original never comes out and specifically like tells us as the player that the gas reports were incorrect we have to like infer that so, I wonder if they're going to be more heavy-handed with it in in Rebirth or even the third game. If they're going to be more heavy-handed in, say, like, specifically, Sephiroth was wrong, the reports were wrong, he should have never become evil, but because he read the wrong thing, you know what I mean? Like, are they going to be more heavy-handed with that to, like, explain it to new people? Or are they going to keep it kind of this thing that you have to infer throughout the three games? Um, I would honestly be kind of okay with it in both ways if they do it well. I think I'd rather it stay as like a more inferred thing that you have to understand through multiple playthroughs. I think that's what made the original great is that you, you did kind of have to play through it more than once to understand things. Um, but... I could see a world where they they specifically talk about it and kind of make us understand it. And it could still be cool. So so I'm really curious to see how they how they deal with that. Um, it is really important to the story to understand that Sephiroth is a human being and he wasn't created. And same thing with Cloud and Zack. Um, but I'm just curious how they how they approach that. If it's all just through like memory and they kind of just infer it like they do in the original um or if they are more heavy-handed but i think either way could work so i'm just really curious to see how that goes that's one of the main things i'm going to be like thinking about get in there the villagers need your help get in there Way to go. Two seconds in. I already dropped logs on him. Oh, I wanted to mention also, somebody asked if Sephiroth was always left-handed. I talk about that in my in-depth look at Sephiroth 
uh, quite a bit, but long story short, he is always left-handed. There's just moments in the original where it looks like he's right-handed, but he is, he is left-handed all the time. They did that specifically to uh, help him be an anti-character to Cloud. Cloud being right-handed, him being left-handed. And also because the fighting stance he uses puts his right hand very close to his left hand, so it can be misconstrued that he's right-handed. There he is, the dumb mayor. Best scene inbound. Hold on. I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> Beth really thinking he's the Final Fantasy VII guy. Love the sound effects here. Especially with headphones, it really makes me feel like I'm in a burning house. Yeah, I'm the Final Fantasy 15 guy. Obviously. Time for everyone's favorite scene. That sound effect when they showed the soldier there, that was epic. I didn't notice that the first time around. Sorry for stopping the cutscene. Did you notice his hands were different during that? Yeah, the gloves changed during that's so cool. I didn't notice that first time. Hey, hey. So hey, many man. great little subtle things. Okay, hold on. Everyone quiet, best Don't scene. Worry. I got you. Come on, let's get you up. <laughs> Still, still not a single person is shot. Two people dead right in front of him.
Not the hat. Oh. Couldn't just let it burn. Had to step on it too. Wait for me. I'm coming. <laughs> Sephiroth. There it is. So, there's an interesting, uh, inference that can be made here that can't be made in the original in the original he doesn't even well from what i from what i remember he doesn't even know that cloud slash zach is alive right he walks off before they even get up right uh here he's staring cloud or zach in the face and then doesn't kill him and leaves so there's like a certain amount of Either he still likes Zack and doesn't want to kill him if he doesn't have to, or there's some reason that he leaves him alive, right? Or just Cloud's completely misremembering the scene and no one was standing there. We're not sure, but given that he stares right at him, you could maybe say that, like, Zack was standing there. But, um... Yeah, there's kind of an interesting thing there that was not in the original where it's like there's some reason that he doesn't kill him there. Um, with the way that his mouth kind of moved and the way that he kind of gave like a smile and like a, eh, should I, should I not? And then like decides not. I think that it's probably like a, I'm not going to kill Zach unless I have to kind of thing. It also reminds me of the line in the original when he says, don't push it. Kind of always made me feel like he didn't want to have to kill Zach or Cloud if he didn't have to. Um... So that that's always been my like thought because there's the part in the original where he's walking away and then Cloud's like, you know, I'm going to kill you. And then he's like, don't push it. Or does he say don't push it or don't push your luck? I forget one of the two. But um, yeah, that, that always made me think that he does have a, a bit of like love still in his heart for Zack and Cloud more so Zack. So that's why he doesn't kill him. Um, but this just makes it even more interesting because now apparently he doesn't kill him there either. So that's, that's interesting. Also, yeah, have to say it, that scene kind of blows. <laughs> that was the biggest frustration when everyone played the demo. That's what I heard the most was people complaining about that scene. And I agree. It's kind of dumb. I don't know why they don't shoot. I understand when they first go cl like clump around him. Maybe they're like too scared or like they don't want to kill him yet. So they're just pointing their guns at him. But the second the first guy dies, you can't tell me the other ones aren't shooting, especially the mayor who they've set up as like this guy that'll do anything to save his town. And he was like the, the one running around in the fire trying to save people. So obviously he has some amount of like, I have to save my town within him. So there's absolutely no way he isn't shooting after the first guy gets sliced. Like no way. So I don't understand why they set up the mayor and then just kind of like do nothing with him. That that was my frustration. I think the scene is a bit awkward, but it's like fine, whatever, not a big deal. But I hate the fact that they set up the mayor as being like this guy that'll do anything for his town and blah, blah, blah. And then like the moment that he should have done something, he does nothing and he just dies. And then like, what was the point? Right. So like, I, I don't know, maybe maybe their thought was like, let's set up the mayor as being this really epic dude. And then. Sephiroth is so imposing that even he couldn't even pull the trigger. Maybe that's what they were going for, but I don't think it comes across that way, right? I don't think they did enough to make it come across that way. I feel like it just looks dumb. And I don't know if it's just the composition of it or what, but like it just kind of comes across as more dumb than anything. But I feel like that's what they were going for was like a, he's so 
imposing and epic and scary and whatever that like even the mayor who was willing to do anything for his town couldn't even pull the trigger before he got sliced. Um, I will say I like the way he gets killed because it's like super ruthless and cool and and the game really earns its T rating with that. Like uh, I like that they're being a bit more ruthless in this one. Try to think of what was like the most ruthless scene in the first one. I can't even really think like maybe with the part with Sephiroth and Barrett, maybe, but like, I think that's probably the most graphic thing in the game. Uh, so, yeah, they're starting off being a lot more graphic here. I followed Sephiroth all the way. No, I was talking about remake, in in remake, because I think this one is already starting off more graphic than remake. Is what was my point. Yeah, I mean, the original's pretty graphic, yeah. too, like, especially with Aerith, so... It, it fits. Was Sephiroth, wasn't it? He did this, didn't he? Sephiroth. Soldiers. Mako. Shinra. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of all of this! She gonna fit through that door. Okay, now she's holding it that way. I like how she's struggling to hold the sword. Mother, I have come for you. Now open the way for me. Again. The ones who robbed you of the planet. Your planet. But there's no need to be sad, Mother. Because I'm here for you. Now and forever. Damn. 
Dang, man, that was almost like one-to-one -to, -one to the original. That was sick. You killed my mom. You killed Tifa. My village. My home. <laughs> does he say killed Tifa in the original? I don't think he does. They were mine by right. This planet too, for I have been chosen. I believed in you. No, not you. Whoever the hell you are. thing I remember. The rest is a blank. Now hold on. <laughs> it was all over the news. I remember watching it with my mom. Oh, the Barrett has the reaction we do. They said he went missing during a training exercise. But then the story changed. A couple days later, they started reporting that he was killed in action. Yeah, that was it. The news outlets are nothing but Shinra mouthpieces spewing propaganda. Only dumbasses believe that shit. Question. Does that make me a dumbass? Uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> what I meant was... Screw Shinra for manipulating honest folks. The banter here is so good. I love it. It doesn't matter what they said back then. Sephiroth was in Midgar. We fought him. Whatever happened, he's alive. Don't know about alive so much as... Around? But why come back now? After five years, doing who knows what? Because he wants to finish what he started. He wants to reclaim his birthright and rule over the planet with Jenova at his side. After five years? Not to sound like a broken record, but... It's really bothering me. Well, what's bothering me is all this Genova stuff. It's really bothering me. So anyways, let's just ignore that. Excuse me. Guess the travel or something really did a number on my back. Feels as stiff as a board. Let me take a look. Ah! Wow. You weren't kidding, were you? Let's get you back to the room. Yeah. Let's just call it a night. This isn't the room? No amount of guesswork. I guess their room. Any closer to the truth. So how about we give our heads a rest? What an interesting story. Say it. Uh, oh no, you don't. That bad's mine. <laughs> See dreams. See it tomorrow. Red thirteen didn't get his line, but it was funnier. So I'll take it. Hey, Aerith. You awake? Barely. Why? I was wondering, what's Cloud been doing these past five years? Where's he been? And you're asking me this? Just had a feeling you'd know. Probably did at one point. All that stuff was taken from me though. Or maybe erased? By whispers? Yeah.
Maybe that's why. Why what? <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy, but as far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. Cloud, you up? Gonna need my sword. Tifa might beat me up. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, really interesting that she specifically says that to Aerith here. Um, also... This is, like, really wild. So I was going to say Aerith seems to not be the all-knowing Aerith anymore. Like, in the original, in the remake, I got to keep saying remake because I keep saying original and I keep meaning remake, but <laughs> I got to discern those two. In the remake, um, Aerith had this weird, like, vibe about her that she knew more than we did. And I was going to say, it feels like that's gone now. Whether or not it was ever there, and we just thought it was there, or it was retconned, or she lost it, whatever. Like, for some reason, it doesn't seem to be there anymore. And then before I could say it, they literally came out and said, she used to know, but now she doesn't know because of the whispers. So, like, that's really weird. Like, what are they trying to get at there? Like, so she... We're, like, saying for sure now that she knew more than she was supposed to know. But she lost it? Because I figured if she did know more than she was supposed to know, that would be revealed way later. Because that's going to, like, change the whole game. If, you know, whatever that, whatever that entails. Whether it be she's Aerith from the future or Aerith from another timeline or just Aerith always knew more because she's an ancient and she's smart. Whatever that entails, I figured it was going to be some big reveal later. But here, we're kind of already establishing that she knew things about Cloud, about Zack, about things. And now she doesn't because the Whispers took the memories? Very strange. Very strange. Very interested to see where that goes. Because maybe it's not a big reveal. Maybe it's just like she knew because Zack told her or something and it's not like this big conspiracy Aerith from the future nonsense or maybe it is but we just don't know it yet like really interesting I'm very curious to see where that goes um and pretty curious to see where this goes too because uh there's a little bit more to calm than usual I think they're just gonna go out and talk but we'll see what happens we grabbed our swords so I don't know maybe we're going to fight some demons uh I do have to run to the bathroom real quick, though. Oh, the other thing I want to say before I forget. Um, I'm sad that Red 13 didn't say his line. I always love that line. Where he says, interesting story or whatever. Or he says, like, what a fascinating story. I forget exactly what he says. I always like that, because it was like... Tifa doesn't believe him or, you know, knows that something's up. Barrett's just like, the heck with it. It's too confusing for me. Aerith is probably also on the side of caution. And then, like, it's funny to see that, like, Red 13 is also like, hmm, that seems interesting. Like, it's like they all don't believe him. I just thought it was, like, kind of funny. Um, but him jumping on the bed is also pretty funny, so. Anyways, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Be back in a second. Actually, let's, let's jump back in now, and let's actually look at what's going on. So, um, this was, like, the absolute, I cannot even describe to you how many times... I mean, I'm talking hundreds. I'm talking hundreds of combination of comments, people asking me on Twitch, people emailing me, people asking me in person. What's going to happen at the start? Yo, Zarex. Thank you very much. 
um, what's going to happen at the start of the game? Are we going to get all our material? Are we going to get all our weapons? Are we going to get... Yeah, like, li I cannot describe to you how many people have asked me this question over the course of the last two years. <laughs> or even, like, right at the end of Remake, people were already asking the question. Um, so let's see what we actually get. We have... The bu oh, we can't even change our equipment yet, so I can't actually see exactly what equipment we have. I can see what we have equipped, though. Can I, can I look at my items? Okay, this works. So we have the OG weapons. Metal, 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 leather. I, I don't know why. Well, I guess, I guess it's just to make him tankier because it's Barrett. He randomly has a leather bangle. Power wrist guards and earrings. And then we have one of every element, healing, chakra, assess, prayer, HP up, Chocobo Shiva. So pretty much the only like things that are a bit out of the ordinary for like starting the game would be the HP up materia and then Chocobo and Shiva. Randomly not Ifrit. So this is what I was expecting. This was like the answer I gave everyone when they asked me. I said like probably level one of the elements and like that's it. Um, even the fact that we get Chocobo and Shiva is more than I thought, but makes sense actually. Especially since you get Leviathan and Ramu just from having save files. So yeah, that makes sense. Um... But yeah, pretty much everything completely reset, which is exactly what I thought. Um, with the exception of everyone being level 15. Uh, which is interesting. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is. Maybe just so the numbers are like a bit higher to start off. So it doesn't feel like we are literally like losers that just started our journey. Um, yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, the flashback was level 40, I believe. Was Cloud level 40 also? I forgot to check. Sephiroth was level 40. I forgot to check what Cloud's level was. I want to say he was also 40. Um, yeah, so. Which is definitely a big change from the original. In the original, they specifically made him level 1 to make him look weak. But here they're going more with, like, he is literally Zack. So, like, it... it it's fine. I like that better, actually. It, it never really made much sense as to why Cloud was so weak in the original. That, that's one thing that I actually kind of point at as being weird in the original. If, if Cloud is retelling the story, either A, he's going to be retelling it as Zack, so he's going to be really strong, or B, he's retelling it as himself, but he's not going to, like, tell it as though he's weak. I mean, I, I'd find it hard to believe he'd be like, yeah, so I was a loser, like, it wouldn't really make sense that he'd be there with Sephiroth if he's a loser. So you would think that he would also say that he was strong. So that always came across as kind of weird that he's like specifically terrible in the, in the flashback. I think, I think it makes more sense to tell it as if he's strong. Um, there was another like really goofy thought I had. I might as well share it. Uh, really goofy thought I had during that cutscene. When Cloud puts Tifa down, Tifa says, you said you'd come back and rescue me. Uh, did Cloud make that up, like, to make himself look good? Because I was thinking about it. In, what actually happened is Cloud saved Tifa as the soldier, as the, you know, in his suit. So Tifa never said that because Tifa didn't know it was him. So she obviously never said that. Uh, so that's what actually happened. And then in Cloud's version, like Tifa would immediately know that she didn't say that. So in Zack, she wouldn't have said it to Zack either. Right? If Zack had saved her, she wouldn't have say it, said it to him. So it's like he just made it up, like he just wanted to sound cool, and he was like, look, I, I saved you and you said that, remember? <laughs> Which is kind of interesting. 
she you think she she thinks she said it to like Zach picked her up and she just said it to herself. Maybe she said like Cloud said he would save me, and then he just replaced Cloud with you. Maybe this is like interesting. It'd be funny though. Like it's funny to think that actually just made that up and he was just like, no, it was really cool. I saved you. Remember, and you were like so happy about it, and you were so cool. <laughs> I think probably the most interesting change is the fact that he said you killed Tifa. And then they didn't say... When does he say... In the original, when does he say, I thought you were a goner? Isn't it right there, or does he say it later? I'm trying to remember. Is it is it there in the calm room that he says... Maybe he's about to say it, actually. Wait, we should wait, because he might actually say it right now. Because they're going to they're gonna go talk. But, yeah, he said, you killed Tifa in the flashback, and then they didn't say anything about that. They were like, like no one asked him, how is Tifa alive if she died in your flashback? So it's kind of funny that no one challenged him. But maybe that's what this is for. Like, if I was Barrett sitting there, and Cloud was, like, telling a story, and then he was like, so this is the part where Tifa died, I would look at Tifa and be like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? She's sitting right here. It's kind of funny that no one challenged him at all. Man, listen to Barrett snore. Sorry, did I wake you? Nope. What's going on? Oh, uh, it's nothing, really. There's just something I need to ask you. So, can we talk? Sure. Great, but not here. Are we going to go to the water tower? That's kind of cool. This is giving me uh, Junon talk vibes. I wonder if this is just where they talk instead of Junon. Caught me off guard. <laughs> Going straight from that to just like the most wacky <laughs> jazz solo. <laughs> not even like not even like a song either. Like he's he's soloing. He's like he's like blues club. Just jamming. He's free foreman. He's spitting. He's spitting hot fire down there. <laughs> Jazz is always the right choice. Oh, we're not gonna go to the water tower? Um, yeah, so... I don't want to talk about it too much because we haven't seen much of it yet, but I really do like the inclusion of Sephiroth talking to Cloud throughout the whole journey and making him question things, because I think it'll make the turn later even better. So I, I really like that addition a lot. Do you think Midgar's over there? That's what you wanted to ask me? Anyway. There's something I need to ask you, too. <laughs> Shoot. That night, five years ago, at the reactor, I saw you lying there. Saw your wound. Yeah, so here we go. All the blood. Thought you were a goner. I figured it was too late. Yeah? <sighs> Wait, what are you implying? That I died? That I'm some kind of imposter? This is totally different. Can't believe I'm 
having this conversation with you, but here we are. Here, look. My scar, that proof enough? After you left, Zangan found me. He's the one who brought me to the clinic. He risked his life carrying me out of the reactor and down the river. Wasn't just him though. There's the doctor who operated on me all night and the nurses who looked after me for days on end. I'm here now because they were there for me then. And where were you again? Don't. Oh. In fact, where have you been this whole time? For five years. You know, I can't tell you that. Of course you can't. Sorry, I just need some space. Dang, dude. Holy crap. Wait. Wait, I freaking love that. So, like, in the original, it feels like way more of a one-way street, where, like, Tifa is frustrated with herself because she doesn't know the reality. And Cloud just kind of goes on doing his thing. But here, there's this great, like, back and forth. Like, Tifa's actually mad at him because she thinks he wasn't there for her, which is not shown at all in the original. You could infer it, but it's not showed at all. So, like, I love that. That is so cool. Now there's way more stakes, which there already was a crazy amount of stakes. But now there's even more stakes because it's like, if we can't prove that Cloud was there for her, you know, that goes, like, against their relationship as well. So, like, that's so, so cool. Um, also, the scene of her saying, look at my scar and looking like she's going to pull up her shirt is going to be the most memed thing from this game. I can guarantee <laughs> I We're going to be seeing that for years. That <laughs> I, I can already tell it's going to be a gif and a half. They did that. They had to have done that on purpose. The way that she holds it, and then, like, it quickly cuts off, like, yeah, no, they knew what they were doing. I thought we could just pick up where we left off, like nothing had changed. But I guess I was wrong. Guess so. I was so happy to see you again, but maybe I shouldn't have been. Oof. Can I go down the stairs? Is this guy important or to just zoom in on him for no reason? Pardon me, sir, but you don't look very well. An old war wound acting up, perhaps? If so, I can certainly empathize. I myself fought for the company once upon a time, and my bodies never let me forget it. Who are you? <laughs> you? You look way more important than an innkeeper. It's been a good many years since I served, but still feels like yesterday. Might I suggest retiring to your room for the evening? You could be the calm traveler. I don't think so, though, because he's the innkeeper. Any secrets? Statues? Who the heck's Ned? I feel like I'm not supposed to be hearing that yet. There's some Shinra paper on the wall. Yeah, can I get a rusty nail and a zipper? 
Only the best beer sold here. Beer Texas? The classic Final Fantasy VII character, Ned. I believe the Rusty Nail is a real drink, as well as all the other ones on that menu. You two fight. No. We have enough problems as it is. Copy. So basically, don't fight. Night. <laughs> Tomorrow is another day. Hey, Red Thirteen still got the last word. Wasn't the same word, but he still got this, the last word. Hey, you sleeping on the pillow now. Uh, you just don't know a lot of the context, Letter Kenny. Like I said, I, I would highly recommend watching my in-depth video. It will explain many things. That you're missing. What's this? A gift from our humble establishment. Though it may not look like much, it should help you to break the ice with those you meet. Queen's blood? Oh! Wanna play cards? Alright boys, the playthrough ends here. This is now a Queen's Blood stream. Why is it called Queen's Blood? It's an interesting name. Kinda like it though. Find other players denoted with the icon around the world and challenge them to matches. Should you win, you will often give you new cards to add to your collection. Defeating players will also give you the opportunity to fight other opponents in other towns. You can also build netted decks. Teach me. Teach me. Oh, this looks sick. What is this song? I'm down. Oh my god, Gargantuar, and he's got some flowers on his head? Are they gonna like spoil a bunch of the enemies through this game? I wouldn't be surprised. This card is placed as power to add to your lane total. New positions will be added to the board, which are tiles, emerald, pawns, upon which you can place cards. The yellow number in the top right of the corner of the part's power and the position of the card to add to the board will be indicated by the yellow squares. Oh my god, this feels so like. This feels like a retro Final Fantasy card game. Like, it's not overcomplicated. Or like, you know, a mobile game like the... Um, the one from Intergrade. Like, this feels like it could fit in an OG Final Fantasy game. This is amazing. Let's replace it here. When one of your card position tiles overlaps the position you control, the position rises in rank as there are two pawns on that tile, now the position is ranked two. Cards can only be placed on positions equal to or higher than their rank, which is denoted by the number of pawns in the top left corner of the card. Thus, in order to play the more powerful cards, we need to raise the rank of your positions. Okay, I think I get it. Okay, wait, it said play a two, but this is a three. Oh, I see, the three power, two, okay. Got it. So does that rank that to four? When your card's position overlaps with one of your opponents, you claim that position is yours. No, however, that claiming a position will not raise its rank. I'm a little confused on how the pawns work. Keep track of who's winning a lane by looking at the point total on each side of the board. The numbers on the left represent your power, while the others on the right represent your opponents. You may notice that the cards have tiles with red borders. Those are tiles that are affected by the card's ability. Place cards effectively to make the most of their abilities and match more opponent power than your opponent. In the event you cannot place a card, you can pass with triangle. When both players pass, ends.
Hmm. Okay, so every card only holds one. Okay, I get it. He's got some four power alpha dunk. I got poop cards. Okay, what happens if I do this? Okay, you can't take cards, but you can take positions. You can take pawns. Oh, I got some big magic pot. Oh, wait, that says an ability, that's why. I was gonna say, why is it worth so much? Raise the power of allied cards on affected tiles by two. This would have been much better to play here. So are we looking to just win every lane, or are we looking to win by a lot? I think we have to just win two lanes. So overpowering a lane doesn't really help, I'm guessing. He can't even take that bottom left hand from me. So I don't even need to play there. I have it covered. I got a moo. Doesn't really matter what I play. Actually, this is two, but doesn't matter. Huh. There must be some interesting cards that can, like, overwrite other cards or something, because the game didn't just end immediately. Once the game is over, each player's score is tabulated. Only the player with the higher power in a lane has their power added to their... T oh! Okay, so beating a lane by a lot does matter. You can have more cards in your collection by winning them out to players. You may even end up becoming the best player on the planet. Oh, I will. Oh, I definitely will. Yo, thanks, Seamark. I knew it. Is that a bunny? That is the ugliest bunny picture I've ever seen in my life. Any secrets? Is that Eret's flower garden? Kind of looks like it. Uh Yeah, screw these chairs. <laughs> Why could I even push these chairs? Not here. Rocking chair. Wow, exciting. Dude, the, the chairs, the chair sound effects, zero out of ten. None of the chairs sound like chairs. Of course, this what are they doing? Recent in a series of crises. <laughs> reactor bombing, Good morning, the sir. Sector 7 plate. I must apologize for not introducing myself to you earlier. I'm Brody, the owner of this inn. Your companions have all stepped out. Oh, but Barrett left a message he wanted me to pass along to you. You missed roll call, soldier boy. Luckily, you're on leave for the day. Don't waste it, though. Get your equipment checked ASAP. Sound advice. Perhaps a trip to the arms dealer is in order? Good idea. By the way, Cloud, do you have any folios on you? Yeah. In that case, you might also want to pay a visit to Magnata Books. They have stores all over. But the first official one was built here in Calm. And their resident scholars are remarkably talented. 
If you want to unlock the true potential of your folios, you should go see them. The first customization is always free. The heck is he talking about? Also, why do you look like the innkeeper in some like gothic horror novel that ends up being a vampire halfway through? Is that just me? Of course. This is only the most recent in a series of crises. Multiple reactor bombings, followed by the fall of Where's the seven plate, culminating oh, the radio. in this unprecedented destruction caused by a massive tornado which swept through sectors zero, one, and two. This is like the After same thing we heard earlier. Investigators, Mayor Domino released a statement declaring the tornado to be quote weather warfare. Is it me? By the infamous or does Cloud have like known as are Cloud's eyes way too open? He looks surprised all the time. And has begun investigations into the matter. Like he kind of looks like at all times. It's a bit weird. Finally. Rough day yesterday, huh? You've been waiting for me? I've been waiting for a chance to thank you properly. Without your help, I'd still be in Hojo's clutches, trapped in that lab. It was nothing. Even so, I owe you a debt, until it's paid. I'm going to accompany you. Getting your equipment checked. Have them check mine while you're at it. You have equipment? Sure thing. <laughs> hmm. Who looks got a backbone? I don't know why. That like totally got me. Like that little piece of like that music flutter that happened right when it said he's joining. Kinda kinda got me. That was really cool. I also like that Red 13's all also already getting a lot more screen time. Overcoming challenges, helping people in need, and exploring the world will deepen your party's bonds, thereby increasing your party level. The higher this level, the more skills and abilities will be available in your folios. Okay. Doggo. So this guy has a cactuar. People have pet cactuars? Is that just a monster? I love its movements. Our inspection team conducts routine surveys of Midgar's reactors. Oh, the businessman. Goes without saying the bombings put a hard stop to all that. What? Why is this guy standing all weird? Is it just the camera angle? Why is he standing like that? Do you see that? He's like at a perpetual Michael Jackson stance. Like leaning forward. Wake up, woman. Anything Walmart radio says. Uh, morning. Morning. Everyone's kind of off doing their own thing. I noticed. Say, uh, this tank remind you of anything? Yeah. Place I made that promise to you. Oh, I'm an idiot. Why was I saying? Why was I saying earlier they're not going to the water tower? This isn't even Nibelheim. I don't know why I said that. You remember the dress I wore? <laughs> you, you guys are like, what is he talking uh, about? The light blue one with a uh, bit of green in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Listen, we were just in we were just in Nibelheim with the flashback. Okay, it's an easy mistake to make. Cloud's actions affect his relationships with his allies, and the strength of these bonds can alter portions of the story. Press L1 to do a comrade's feelings towards Cloud, and his gate is symbols such as happy and really happy. Right now, Tifa's like, meh. Um. This is such a quiet, peaceful town. I can't wait for, like, having to play through the game a thousand times to get the different responses for trophies. If they do the same thing like they did in the, re the remake. Having to get all the different scenes. Queen's Bloom? I heard Queen's Bloom? Cards? You wanna play cards? I'll win. I'll take all your cards. Little boy? Wanna play? I'll smash you. You won't even have a chance. Okay. You're jamming. Why are these people just watching? Well, we got water. Well, we got swimming. Phrasing. I will smash that kid in Fortnite. Just add in Fortnite at the end I'll, every time. It always works. Aha! Uh -huh. Finally decided to get up. Yeah. So what you been doing? Is this calm or Italy? Of course. You have. Kind of both. Got business with the bookstore. It's also kind of huge. But if you're free afterwards, wanna climb the clock tower together? No. Sure. Sure. Let's. For real? Awesome. Your relationship has changed. I'll go get the tickets. We're in, boys. I'll meet you in front of the tower, okay? Our entire relationship has changed. This is where it all began. Ooh, some rocks. Hey there. Welcome to what are you wearing? Oh, I take it this is your first visit to Merlin? Is that you? Customization can seem tricky to the uninitiated. It takes time and experience to get it right. But I think you'll pick it up quick enough. Let's give it a try. Oh boy. This is looking... So this is what I... Wait, that's weird. I can do that. Um, This is where I'm really interested because I'm still looking for what puts this game really apart from Remake, because I was saying before, I don't want Rebirth to just be Remake again, because I think a lot of people are going to get bored with that, especially people that weren't super into, like maybe just enjoyed Remake for the story, but weren't like super into the combat. Um, they need to really set this game apart from Remake, or else, you know, Remake was great, but most people after 40 hours of Remake are pretty much like hitting their max with the combat, so if they have to do another 50 60 hours of remake combat again with like no change it's gonna get really repetitive and boring so i'm still looking for what really sets this game apart from remake and i think the synergy abilities are a good start but i need to see a bit more and it looks like uh this might be part of it because this looks really cool okay so this is just ability trees Okay, so this is just how we unlock abilities, really. There's a nice skill course, edition course come available. You are free to choose which skill course unlock and blah blah. 
I do like that there's some, like, I think something that remake was a bit missing was, like, um, trying to make the game accessible to different play styles. The only real thing you could do is, like, pick different characters to control in terms of play style. Other than that, Cloud always played as Cloud, Barrett always played as Barrett. So I'm interested to see how much uniqueness goes into this. Increasing the party level creates more skill cores. A character will earn SP when they level up or when they acquire manuscripts. Like in Final Fantasy VIII. Unlocked skill cores can be reset at any time and the SP spent will be returned. So feel free to experiment with different combinations. That's nice. And that's about all we can do for now. But we haven't even skimmed the surface. Believe you me. There's much more so wait, you have to go to a store for this? It may not seem like it yet, but you'll see. You can't... You can't get this in the menu? Huh. That's interesting. Hey there. So how... How crazy does this get? Are we talking like straight... Ability... Or like stats, or what? Overcharge damage... That's an ability, synergy ability, synergy skill, another ability, here we go, that's just a straight stat increase, synergy ability, regular ability, stat boost, charge time, synergy, so I mean it's... It's mostly just abilities, but there's a couple like little stat boosts. I don't know if this is really like they said that you could do this to kind of change your play style, but I'm not really seeing anything that would necessarily change your play style. Just kind of unlocking every ability and then choosing which abilities you want, but I, I, I don't see anything that's like this is going to make Barrett a tank, and this is going to make Barrett a attacker, and this is going to make Barrett a support. Like, it's more of just abilities and little stat boosts, but we'll see. It's obviously going to get crazier as we go, so. Thanks for stopping by. Like, it's not on the level of, like, Sphere Grid, where you can, like, go off on a other, you know, let's turn Orin into a magic caster, you know? Like, it's not that. It's just more of just little boosts. But we'll see. Might get, might get crazier. That's only the... The first part of it, so. I'd like to see some real customization, just because that's something that Remake was kind of lacking. The fact that this game's going to have more play uh, playable characters is already going to give you a lot of variety. Like, you can customize your party to your playstyle already because there's so many party members. So the game's gonna get that already just from that, but it'd be cool to see the abilities also give you an even additional layer of customization. So that'll be that'll be interesting. I'd like to see the weapons also do that, because the weapons definitely gave a little bit of customization in Remake, but it was more of just like, do you want Cloud to be an attacker or a magic caster? Do you want Tifa to be an attacker or a magic caster? Those were kind of only the two, two only options. Um, so it'd be cool if the weapons were even more unique in this one, and maybe we had some weapons that were good at aerial combat, some weapons that were... Actually, another one, um, some of the weapons were, like, really defensive as well. Like, Buster Sword was really defensive, so I guess you had that too, so... Yeah, continuing that would be nice also. We could have, like, a nice three layers of customization. What weapon you use what abilities you have in your folio and your party setup. It could be like three different layers of making up your own play style, you know? So that's really exciting.